Uh, hello guys, so please note that we are waiting for more participants to join this webinar. Uh, till that time, I am sharing our social media platform link, our communities link and our official website link. So guys, go and follow us on our social media platform for upcoming web, uh, webinar and workshops. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. OK. When we will start, we'll start now or we'll. We'll start in some... few minutes. OK, sure.
Okay, now let's start the webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 050 session. Um, Archie is in. Uh, Archie Jain, this said, I'm a host for this webinar. If you have any question and queries, please uh, put a question on chat box. We will tell to help you out. Moving ahead and talking about event and webinar sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is in India, one of kind porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question, uh, we bruise through our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. Also, we educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the Synergetic solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution. Certification solution, certification add on solution, risk killing solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Uh, what does Microsoft certification does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained and build confidence for the appear for the exam, and uh, you will get certified. That is recognized. Uh, this is skilling learning. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental training. Then you can go with the advanced role based training, then expert level training. In this fundamental training, we are providing we are providing five types of training: AZ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are provide you. Uh, AZ104, AZ204, AZ500 and more. In this expert level certification, we are provide you AZ305, SC100, PL600 and AZ400. Also, we have special certification which we provide AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, please connect us. I already shared contact details contact details on chat box. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. Also, we provide certification add on onboarding add on on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead and today training is organized and handled by ATC community. So our ATC community is open for all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. In this ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Azure Tech community for Punekars. Emerging technology community for Suratkars. Azure Tech community for Nagpurkars. Guys, you just have to install the Meetup app on your device and on your phone. There you can follow our communities. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take a screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Then speaker for this training uh, is Sonu Satyadas. He is a Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with uh, Synergetics as a practice head. Agenda for this webinar, you will get know about uh, uh, AI 050 certification and benefit of it. So uh, in one day webinar, we are providing you one day webinar uh, which includes study material and overview of the module. Then coming with the self learning part, we are providing we are providing you complementary learning achievement batch, which we have to you just have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch. Then coming with mentoring and exam prep session. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, submit a question on our feedback form. Then coming with an knowledge assessment, we are providing you assessment link you just have to give your exam and test your knowledge in this webinar we are providing you ai050 learning achievement batch you just have to follow the step and you will get the activated batch uh, here is a uh, you can see on my screen here is the upcoming webinar details so guys interested participants uh, register themselves and uh, please note that registration is mandatory to all of us 
make sure guys you follow us on our linkedin facebook twitter and youtube youtube so uh, for upcoming relevant update and a workshop thank you guys uh, now i would like to hand over this mic so no sir you will continue ahead thank you archie hello everyone good morning i hope i am audible to all of you So I'm sharing my screen and I hope it's now visible to all of you. If you see, uh, we are going to discuss today about the AI 050 session that is develop generative AI solutions with Azure Open AI. Since AI is uh, the technology that is now very uh, uh, spoken in the market and uh, how we can build such AI solutions with Azure Cloud, as we are going to discuss in today's session. And uh, myself, Sonu, uh, Sonu Satyadas, working with Synergetic as Assistant Manager Technology. So I'm primarily working into uh, cloud technologies and AI, but my background is uh, dev technologies, including the open source and Microsoft tech, uh, covering all uh, JavaScript, Python, .NET, uh, even I work with the DevOps tools, containers, and microservices uh, deploying with Kubernetes. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer on the Azure Cloud. So completed all these certifications on the Azure for Azure administration, architecting, Azure developer and Azure AI engineer. And uh, in this course, we are going to discuss about the Azure Open AI. So, how we can create and deploy the Open AI models in Azure platform and how to consume this with the uh, code and how this prompt engineering techniques helps us to build uh, effective generative AI models, how we can get relevant results by constructing the prompts. So that's what we are going to discuss in today's session. So this is the agenda or schedule for this uh, session. We'll be talking about the uh, open AI fundamentals. Going forward, we'll talk about the natural language solutions and prompt engineering. And post lunch, we'll be primarily discussing on code, how we can use the Python code to connect with the Azure open AI solutions and using the DAL E in, uh, in, in Azure for generating the images. And we're finally ending up with uh, using custom data with uh, our GPT models. So following that, we'll be having a Q&A session. And if you have any questions, you can ask. So during the session, I request all of you to be on mute. And if you have any queries, you can put the questions in the chat. So let's get started with the first module. If you see the first module is get started with the Azure Open AI service. In this module, we'll see what is generative AI, how to provision a generative AI resource in uh, Azure, 
and uh, deploy the models and how to work with the Azure OpenAI Studio. If you see the artificial intelligence is a broad term which has uh, uh, which is now became very popular with the uh, generative AI. But yes, uh, AI is not a new term. It's uh, there in the industry from last 50 plus years and uh, people uh, build the applications and solutions around AI for different use cases for automating things. Uh, for building intelligent solutions. So for. Building such uh, applications. We use machine learning model. So machine learning you can say as a subset of artificial intelligence, because if you see artificial intelligence ecosystem, it's not only machine learning models, so it can be expert systems or uh, robotics and many other things. So all together we call it as artificial intelligence. So machine learning is one subset of the artificial intelligence. So robotics expert systems and uh, the other uh, decision services, uh, all this part of the AI solutions. And one major part is machine learning. So you can see machine learning is a subset of the AI that allows or that enables the machines to learn from some set of data which is provided and then make predictions uh, based on that data. Which means we will be using some kind of algorithms. Uh, trained with some data, some data in the sense very large set of data will validate this model's accuracy and then will publish the services or uh, publish this models as services so that we can consume it from the other applications. We build machine learning models for different use cases. Uh, something like uh, predicting the market analysis or uh, predicting the weather or grouping the uh, elements, classifying the objects or detecting some kind of elements. Uh, so we use the machine learning models for different use cases. And yes, uh, we uh, use different types of machine learning models for uh, different purposes, including uh, uh, the classification regression or clustering and many other uh, things coming inside that. So since this is not the session for machine learning, so we are not going into the details of machine learning and the types of uh, uh, learning methodologies like supervised, unsupervised, semi-supervised and reinforcement. So there are many uh, terms around the machine learning and deep learning. So we are not going into the details of that. But understand machine learning is the process uh, that enables the machine to learn something from that data which is provided and just make predictions. For example, if I have lasted 10 years of weather information, I can put this weather information as an input to the model and train this model to understand the parameters of this data. And later we can ask the model what will be the prediction. So for example, okay, so depends on different parameters. It's going to predict the or it's going to evaluate what is the uh, what temperature uh, of, of a particular for a particular day. So we have already collected lots of data uh, about the temperature that uh, including the wind or fog cloud and many other humidity and many other things. So what can be the temperature for that particular city? So from last uh, five years, 10 years data we have 
for each day what was the temperature for each hour what was the data so we'll use this data to train the model and then the model will be able to correctly predict what will be the temperature if if more humid then what will be the temperature or uh, if it is windy then what will be the temperature or if it is cloudy what can be the temperature so depends on different parameters it can predict the temperature for a particular city so now if we want to use this model we can provide the parameters as input to the model and the model will be able to correctly predict the temperature because it's going to use or it's going to use the patterns that it learned uh, from the data which is used for training and correctly predicts that but when it, we talk about deep learning which is a subset of machine learning or which we can say it's a uh, one step ahead of the uh, machine learning which make use of neural networks to process the data and making decisions so neural networks uh, we are not going to details of neural network but understand it's a uh, kind of uh, layers or components that uh, are interconnected for building the uh, deep learning models we when we provide some input data the data can go through different uh, neural network layers and that will uh, process the data different ways and then generate mm -hmm. some responses so deep learning is used in various uh, uh, areas like uh, speech recognition vision services object detection autonomous vehicles and many areas we use it or even anomaly detection or uh, the the pattern recognitions so we use the um, deep learning in different areas but if you see all these deep learning models are very complex than the machine learning models because machine learning models are very simple it can it just a process a series of data or a, a subset of the data and just make some predictions that's it but deep learning models will process the data using neural networks because it uh, uh, pass the data through various layers or various neural networks and then uh, analyze it and give you the response for example when you give an image the uh, the the deep learning model can go and analyze what are the things inside this image okay so what are the different objects exist in the image what are the different color patterns used inside this image okay so that means or it can even go and recognize the faces uh, in, in that particular uh, image. So these are because of deep learning models, because it's, it's just uh, giving you some output based on the data that is provided. But understand, these models are not generating anything new. It just uh, give you an analysis result or it give you a response which is uh, which is coming from the given data so i have given an image it is just uh, extract the faces from that image or it is just uh, detecting the objects inside that image or it is detecting the different the color patterns used in that image and then give you a response so it just give you the informations uh, from that given uh, input or it, in case of text based models we can say if i'm giving a text a, suppose a paragraph i'm giving as an input it can go and identify what are the different entities used inside it means uh, it may be a person name it may be a city name or it may be a, a date and time value or it may be something else so that means it is able to go and uh, detect what are the different words that represents an entity like a human being 
like a person or a date and time or location or something like that. It is also able to go and recognize the sentiment. That means whether the given text is a positive uh, statement or a negative statement. Like if you see uh, movie reviews, so whenever a movie released, people can write reviews on websites. So these reviews can be a positive review or a negative review. It's not necessary to go and manually read and understand whether it is positive or negative. You, you can use a deep learning model to understand whether this given feedback is a positive feedback or negative feedback. It's because of the deep learning models. OK, or if you are giving an audio as an input, it can recognize the speaker's voice. OK, it can tell you that, OK, this particular person is talking or uh, uh, from the audio, it can understand what is the language he is speaking or from that voice, it can uh, uh, convert or generate the text. OK, so that means transcribing the text. So if I am uh, talking in one language, OK, maybe English, so it can go and write the transcription for that. So that means uh, deep learning models we use for different purposes. It process the input data and then give you an output based on that given data. But understand they are not generating anything new. But if you see, generative AI is a kind of deep learning model which start building or which start creating new elements or new uh, uh, data. Okay. That means in case if uh, you want to create some new content like a text content or it may be image or it may be audio, you can tell the generative AI to create it. So it will be creating a fresh new data. For example, you can tell the model to write a poem about a particular subject or you can tell the model to write a blog related to a particular subject or you can tell the model to create a sequence series of questions and answers uh, regarding a topic. Okay, so that means you can tell the model to create something new or you can even tell the model to draw something new. For example, you can tell the model, OK, I want to go and uh, draw an image of uh, uh, a ship in the ocean. OK, so it will draw an image of a ship uh, in the ocean and it will be uh, using different uh, styles, maybe Picasso style or uh, what a cinematic light lightning and many other types, maybe cartoonic image. So different uh, uh, styles it can use to draw the images, right? So that means it is generating a new content. It's not going to to uh, 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 just to process the given input and give the insights about that. Instead of that, it's going to create something new. So that means we are instructing the model to do something and it creates that information. For example, I am telling the model, write a story about uh, friendship. So that means I have given the instruction as a text. That instruction which I have given in text is called a prompt. So going forward, we will talk about what is prompt and how prompt engineering helps us to generate the responses, uh, which is more relevant. So the, the, just now you need to understand what is the prompt. Prompt is the input text we are giving as an instruction. OK, and the model is capable to understand what is the prompt and then it is going to give a response. OK, saying, OK, uh, I am going to write a story for you uh, regarding the friendship and then it will start writing a story. Once upon a time, there was a uh, lion and monkey stayed in a, or lived in a forest and so on and so on, right? So it's going to write a fresh new story about a friendship. Okay, it, may, it will be completely a fresh new story. 
this response which is coming from the model is called a uh, the 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 response which is coming from the model is called a uh, completion so what is the uh, prompt and what is the completion is the prompt is the input or instruction that the user is giving to the model for generating something and uh, completion is the response which is generated from the model so there are different uh, generative ai models available in the market if you see uh, organizations like uh, open ai which is one of the uh, popular uh research laboratory that uh, creates different uh, generative ai models for creating the text creating the image creating the audio and many things so they creates different uh, generative ai models uh, that can be used in our applications and services like this other organizations also even uh, 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 the google or meta that is the facebook uh, parent company so they all are creating generative ai models if you see i can show you a list so if you see uh, this is palm 2 this is uh, our uh, google's next generation large language model okay. or you can also talk about gemini so this is this is directly going into bard okay so you can read about this google's gemini is a multi model ai uh, ai model that runs on mobile devices and data centers okay so it's is also an ai model that can be used and so here is the information okay and if you say this is next generation open source large language model from meta okay so there are different uh, language models or deep learning models uh, created they are generative uh, models so not only the open ai there are many organizations many communities creating uh, generative models okay so what uh, uh, we are going to discuss here is how these generative ai models we can use so one of the popular generative ai model creator is open ai now open ai is uh, supported by microsoft by funding to it so for their research and other activities microsoft is funding so we can say microsoft is now partnered with open ai for their uh, research and other activities so the open ai models are now available in uh, azure cloud also so typically the open ai is a service provided by the open ai or open ai organizations we have to register in the open ai website to start using the open ai models so there are different uh, models available uh, we'll talk about that models later uh to use this models we have to go and register with open ai website and uh, uh start paying for it okay but the problem is this open ai models is available uh, from uh, a set of servers which is hosted by them only but as a user if i want to deploy the open ai model in my own uh location for example uh, mostly the open ai service servers are coming uh from us but i want to deploy an instance of open ai models in india location 
So how I can do that? So Microsoft Azure is a solution, okay, in which you can deploy your uh, generative AI model, that is open AI model in Azure Cloud. So in which region you want to deploy, you can select a particular region uh, and deploy it there. So currently, the number of locations which is supporting the OpenAI models are limited. It's keep updating. So you have to check the Microsoft documentation for the latest list. So in which of the locations I can deploy the OpenAI models. So you will be deploying the OpenAI models in the uh, Azure cloud locations wherever you want and then you can start using them. Okay. So that the benefit is uh, you will be using the exact same open AI models that is available uh, generally with the capabilities of the cloud, which means which means you will be uh, you making make use of this uh, cloud functionalities like uh, monitoring, security, and privacy. And that means if you want to deploy the OpenAI models in a Azure region, and you want to make this accessible only from a selected network, you can do that. So that means you can configure the access uh, privileges or access securities from a diff from a particular network only. You can do that. You can even configure the uh, data privacy means how you want to moderate the content, how you want to filter this content, what can be the moderation level, so that things can be configured. You can even uh, see built-in monitoring is enabled for every Azure services. Okay, so you will be able to see how much uh, data is consumed or uh, what is the number of request uh, rate uh, that comes into the model. So all you can see using the Azure services because these are some extra features added by the Azure to the open AI. So the, the benefit of using open AI in Azure cloud is it is going to give you the cloud features and functionalities along with the same open AI models. So to use the Azure open AI services, you have to go and fill a form and submit the request for enabling it in your subscription because the open AI is not uh, a service that is enabled by default. Its access is provided only based on request. So if you want to enable open AI in your Azure subscription, you have to submit a form to enable that. So you can go to aka.ms slash OAI apply uh, website and it will give you a form there you have to fill your uh, uh, first name, last name, subscription IDs and your use cases and other, other informations like organization website and other thing to register yourself and uh, request for open AI. Suppose if you have open AI enabled in your account, you can go and create a new instance of open AI. So that can be done using the Azure portal, means using the web user interface, or you can use the command. So you can see in the right side, there is uh, a web user interface. So while creating this generative AI models or you want to deploy an OpenAI instance, you can specify the region. As you see here, we can specify the region, name, and a pricing tier. So currently, only standard pricing tier is available. So you can 
even create the same using the command also because Azure services can be created and managed by command line tools also, right? So that command line tools uh, we can use to build the OpenAI model also. Once you have created the uh, OpenAI, OpenAI instance or OpenAI service in Azure, you can go to the OpenAI Studio. because It provides a link to open the OpenAI Studio. Understand OpenAI Studio is a platform or environment where you can deploy different OpenAI models. If you see, OpenAI is providing various types of generative AI models like a GPT, that is Generative Pre-trained Transformers, GPT models, that also GPT 3.5 version and GPT 4 versions available. So GPT 3.5 is a family of models where multiple GPT 3.5 types available. Similarly, GPT-4 also a family of GPT models, which also provides uh, a set of uh, GPT-4 models. We can also see DAL-E, which is image generation model, uh, Whisper, embeddings, and many other models. We'll, going forward, we'll talk about that. So you can see there are different models available and if you wish to use any or one of this, you have to go and deploy uh, an instance of that model. For example, if you want to use GPT-4, you can select GPT-4 and deploy an instance of the GPT-4 model. If you are a GPT user, means GPT is a text model or large language model that is primarily used for text generations and text processing. There are two endpoints available or two playgrounds available for GPT that is completions playground and the chat completions playground. So the right side, you will be able to see the user interface, sorry. Sorry. So right side, you will be able to see the chat playground. So this is a playground. There is a chat playground, completion playground, and a DAL-E playground. So DAL-E is a different model which is used for image generations. So we'll talk about that later. But for text models, there are two uh, playgrounds, chat and the completions available. Chat uh, is used for the new models and the completions are used for the old models. Like a completions uh, supports, uh, supported by GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct model, which is uh, one of the older type or which is compatible with GPT 3. So only older models are supporting G, uh, completions endpoint. All the new models, including the GPT 3.5 Turbo, they offers or they provides the chat completions model. What is the difference between chat completion and completion? Going forward, I will explain and show you uh, uh, in demo. Here you can see the family of models. So GPT 4 is the newest model in that family or in that uh, group. So GPT-4 is a multi-model model because it can accept image also in sometimes. So uh, it can accept multiple data as an input, but capable to produce only text data. And this is very restricted to only certain locations because every location is not offering the GPT-4. And this is very, very powerful and creative model from OpenAI. 
But GPT 3.5 is another family of models which contains a set of models inside it. Or the old GPT 3.5, new GPT 3.5, GPT 3.5 with a 4K tokens, GPT 3.5 with a 16K tokens. So there are different GPT 3.5 models available. And this is also a uh, NLP model or uh, large language model that is most widely used because it is one of the fastest model even comparing with the four this is more far fastest uh, but if you ask uh, comparing about the uh, creativity data creation performance gpt4 is better but gpt3 is faster embeddings is another another model which is available in the embeddings what we typically do we generate a embeddings vector vector is the uh, number representation of a text suppose if you give a text like hello how are you so hello how are you is a text but how this uh, how in this word that texts are interconnected or uh, texts are related that is calculated based on the embeddings vector. So if you want to create an embeddings vector, which is a numeric array of uh, uh, numbers, or it's an array of numbers, will be creating the embeddings. So this is mostly used in similarity text, or sorry, similarity search and the text search uh, scenarios. Okay wherever we want to do a text based searching we use embeddings dal e is another model which is uh, available in azure uh, from the open ai which is primarily used for the image generation okay so currently it is in preview so only limited functionalities are available now so uh, what are the that what what is that feature we'll discuss in uh, coming module. So if you see the DAL E is the image generation model, which is available in selected regions of the Azure cloud. You can see what are the different uh, models available uh, in a particular region in the under the model section. If you see here is the model section in the model section you can see the list of models which are available and their versions what are the different versions available so the number of services or number of models available it depends on the location because every location is not providing the same set of uh, models so some locations will give complete set of uh, models. Some locations provide limited set of uh, models. Next is the deployment. So deployment of generative AI models. So since we have the models available for a particular location, we cannot consume them directly until and unless you deploy an instance of it. So you have to create an instance of a model by selecting the model and click on the deploy. You can deploy a named instance of that particular model. If you see in this picture, you'll be able to see that we can specify we can specify the model name version and a deployment name so this deployment name can be any text that is that can identify the deployment okay so you can give any name like a my deployment hello deployment sample deployment anything so it means you are creating an instance of uh, uh, that particular model that you selected. We can even do the same using the Azure CLI. So you need to specify the 
az cognitive services account deployment create command okay where you need to specify resource group then name of the uh, open ai resource deployment name that means uh, which is the name uh, we have we are using inside the uh, deployment model name which which model you are going to deploy the model version model format is obviously open ai and the pricing sorry is scale settings so that is a standard scale setting so these are the, the parameters you have to use while running through the command so what is prompt and completions if you remember in the beginning i have explained you what is prompt uh, and completion so prompt is a text that we are giving as an input or as an instruction to the model right and the model is going to give you some response it may be uh, uh, a text that a text or it may be a image or something else so we are giving the instructions as text and it is going to give you the response as text or some, some other format so what is a prompt and completion is the instruction that we are providing as text is called a prompt and completion means what is a response generated by the model so we can use generative ais for different use cases here are some uh, scenarios and their prompt and exam uh, completions so we'll get an idea so classifying the content so you can classify the given text whether it is positive or negative for example you are watching the movie and you want to write a feedback of that movie or you are planning to watch a movie and you, before that you will see the review so in the whether the review is a positive review or negative review how it will understand we provide or we pass the uh, review text as an argument to the uh, model or argument to the uh, gpt model so it can tell you whether it is a positive feedback or negative feedback we can generate new contents as i have mentioned you can tell the model to write a poem for you so it will give you a poem you can use it for translations means you can detect the language which is there in in the uh, text and also convert that into a different language summarization is another scenario means you can provide a very very large content means uh, maybe multiple paragraphs you can give and you can tell the model okay i want to summarize this in just 10 sentences so instead of writing all this in 10 paragraphs just to summarize this in few sentences continuation is one way to grow the uh, tomatoes is two is the text we are giving but there i want to continue with some other statements if you say uh, uh, like a very simple easy to understand example i want to write a story but i will be starting like this uh, like once upon a time there was a king lived so that means i'm starting with the story as once upon a time there was a king rest of the things it automatically fill okay so that is continuation you can generate it for even question answering that means if you want to ask a question and get the uh, response or get the answer you can do that chat normal chat completions you can do means you can ask the models about a question and you, it can converse with you means it will send us some response back and it will be uh, acting like a virtual assistant
testing the models in the playground so going forward in the demo i can show you what is completions playground and the chat completions playground can you see in the completions playground we can provide a text and uh, when you click on the generate it is writing the continuation of that particular text chat playground means it is also doing the completion only but the input and outputs will be in the form of a chat conversation it also does all the things what completions performs or completion does but completions is not supported now in new models so we go with the chat completions where we converse with the uh, model like a virtual co agent communication like a chatbot let me show you how we can do this okay so i'll quickly show you a demo for that we can go to azure portal in the portal you can check the subscriptions you have so you can see i have two subscriptions i have the uh, open ai enabled for one subscription and i have requested for the other also let me see whether it is enabled for the other suppose if i have to create an open ai instance i can simply go to the resource group and create a new instance here I, I already have an instance created you can see okay but if i want to create a new one you can click and you can search for open ai so it's going to give you the open ai choice just click and create it fill up the values like what is your subscription which contains the open ai uh, feature enabled so in my msdn's platform subscription it is enabled but uh, let me go to the other one so here you can see open ai services currently available to customers via application form only so for this it is not enabled so if you want you have to go and submit a form suppose if i click here it will take me to this application form so we have to fill and submit this request okay. so anyway i have this msdn platforms which which is enabled with uh, uh, open ai feature so i'm going with that resource group i'm keeping this uh, as well region you can select any region you want so i'm selecting uh, east us name of the open ai model i can say bst hyphen open ai and the pricing tier i can say s0 click on next you can configure the network access so whether you want to access it from all the ne uh, networks or only from selected networks so that you can configure so here i am giving all the networks which means from any network you can access it I'm not filling any tags, just next and uh, create it.
okay it's done so we'll go and see what is uh, the open ai studio so go to the resource and here you can see a button the top that take you to the open ai studio so if you click this you will go to the open ai studio so you can see now this open ai studio uh, is open here in the left side you will be able to see the playground section and the management section the playground is uh, the place where you can work with the uh, services like a chat completions and dal e means you can try and test the uh, models but under the management you can see deployments and models so if you want to see what are the different uh, models available in this region so you can see in the top right corner you will be able to see the instance name and the location east us is given as the location right but i have another instance in the sweden central you can see the location is sweden central so let me open this window so this is also opening the azure open ai studio if you see the difference here the features and functionalities remain same but the difference is if you go to the east us one and click on this models you can see it uh, provides only these many models right so gpt 3.5 and the text embeddings are available there so it does not provide gpt 4 or any other models but if you go to the one which is in the sweden central you can see the location is sweden central and click on this models it provides lots of models including babbage dal e davinci gpt 3.5 models gpt 4 models right and the text embeddings model so sweden central is providing more models uh, so that you can try out something if you want okay so it's your wish where you want to create the instance so i have selected uh, two locations one is sweden central and uh, East US. Now, the first thing what I'm going to do is to deploy an uh, instance of this model. So you can see I'm selecting GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. Selecting this model and then doing a deployment i'm selecting this and i can give a name for this deployment see i'm taking this copy here i can give the same name for the deployment so this is the model name and this is the deployment when i click on the create mm, The specified capacity zero of account deployment should be what happened? If 
capacity problem. Okay. Okay, so here you can see it's successfully deployed. So you can see there is one deployment done for which model? GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K, right? And deployment name also I have given same because easy to remember. Okay, and I am going to deploy one more deployment, but this time I'll select a different model from here. I select GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct. This is an older version. So this I can say. This I can hyphen old. So I'm just giving old means this is an older type of model. So when I click create. Yes, you can see this is also created. So GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K is a new model and GPT 3.5 uh, Turbo Instruct is the older model. Now, if I come to completions. If you come to the uh, completions playground. Inside this deployments drop down list, you will see only this old one because the completions endpoint is only available for the older versions. So you can just select this and you can give a, a prompt. So something like a once upon a time there was a king and then i'm not writing anything further i'm just clicking on generate see it is creating the remaining text for that okay so once upon a time there was a king named alexander who ruled over the vast and prosperous kingdom and so on so it is generated up to this because of the text limit so now again, if I click on generate, it's continuing with that and creating the remaining. Okay. So again, if I click on generate, it create the remaining. So like this. Okay. So that means this is the completion, which is going to complete the text. Or else I can say, Here you can see the max length of tokens is 100 given. So I'll give make it 300. And here I'll say write a letter to school principal uh, asking for leave. Okay, let's let's check whether it is able to generate or not. Okay. Can you see? <clears throat> so it has created the letter structure or letter template like uh, to school principal name, school name, address city, and dear principal name, and then writing so and so, right? So this is so here due to the reason for this leave you can fill up what is the reason okay so that means this is a structure it has created or template generated so this is also uh, a completion example so because i have told to create uh, a letter a leave letter for it and it is able to do that okay and if you go to the chat section chat is the new api so in chat in the right side you will be able to see the deployment models so here you can see both that means the old one and new one because the new uh, chat completion it supports all the models including the older and new but the completions endpoint is not supported by the new model new model supports which one the 
sorry the chat is supported by all the models even older model and new models are supported okay so here i can do the chat completion which means here left side you can see the assistant setup which means you can set the behavior of uh, the virtual assistant so because you are going to talk to a chat assistant means like a chatbot so what will be the behavior of the chatbot that you can configure so you can select one of the pre-configured uh, behavior from here or you can write your own system message so system message is typically used for setting the behavior of this assistant so here i'll say you are an ai assistant that helps people to write uh, python code so i have set the behavior that you are an assistant that is helping to write the python code and i'm saving this uh, by clicking apply changes and then here in the chat section we have a user and the assistant so this this is for assistant setup which is system message now there are two people to talk one is the assistant and one is the user so as a user i can ask a prompt and it is going to give an answer the the assistant is going to reply so because i have set the behavior as uh, assistant that helps uh, to write the python code i'm just asking a general question how to find the uh, largest element in a collection of numbers and i give this prompt so here you can see i have not mentioned here that you have to go and write the python code i have just mentioned how to find the largest element uh, in that collection of numbers which means it could explain me in very simple english statement that you can go to the uh, collection and check which number is larger one by one in 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 english statements it could explain but instead of that what it is done it created a python code for doing that means by applying the max function right so this is the numbers collection and you can use the max function and pass the numbers array or collection and that returns the largest number so why it is generated the python code instead of explaining this code in a simple english because i have set the behavior of the assistant uh, that it is an assistant that is going to write a python code right so that is uh, chat completion which means you can set the behavior of the assistant using system message and then you then you can start conversing with the assistant so now you can ask something else to the assistant that okay how to find a text is pallian wrong or not see it is writing python code only why it is not explaining in english statements because here it is clearly mentioned that it is assistant for writing python code right <coughs> So here you can see the uh, how we are invoking the model is that how we converse with the chatbot, right? So that's why it is called a chat completions endpoint or chat completions uh, model. Okay. Now, if you see, there are labs available for uh, AI zero five zero. Suppose if you are uh, ready with your uh, uh, open Azure OpenAI subscription, you will be able to do that. So I'll be sharing this links later in the chat.
we can even go to the lab directly also Okay, so this only. So if you want, you can locally download this uh, lab and then follow the instructions to execute this. So I'll be sharing the link in the chat. So here, the same lab you can see by launching this also, but what I can do, the one which I have downloaded, this is the one we can extract. So you can open this in Visual Studio Code and this folder contains an instructions folder. Instructions contains the exercises which contains the markdown document which contains the instructions for doing the lab. Okay, So it's something like this. So you'll be able to go and perform the steps one by one. So here, what are the steps we have done is already mentioned in the lab one. Like uh, you can go to Azure and provision the open AI resource. That means we have created the Azure open AI resource. I have showed you how to create it. And then deploying a model. So what are the steps we can follow? for deploying this model. Here you can see, we can go and uh, deploy the GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K model, which we have done here. Like here, this is the model we have deployed, right? This is the one which we have deployed. So that step also completed. And then using the chat playground, how to use this. So where we can see the assistant setup that is for setting up the system message we have already done this uh, here in the chat section we saw that we have configured the system message that is in the assistant setup and then we have conversed with this model by typing the uh, prompt and then getting the response so that is also done. So we can also configure the uh, prompt parameters. Okay, so you can also see in the right side, we have some extra parameters called the temperature. And uh, also you can specify the number of tokens. Uh, this is the max response. Okay. So here, what is this max response and the temperature? So that we have to understand because that is going to affect the creativity of the model. So what is this max response? So if you are aware about the generative AI uh, in OpenAI, uh, it uses a transformer model or transformer architecture that divide the given text into small chunks. Okay, that means if you are giving a uh, prompt, it is dividing that prompt into small pieces, like uh, small tokens. So each token is uh, maybe three to four characters or a small word. 
suppose if it is a small word of three to four character it will be considered as one token or if it is a large word it will be divided into multiple tokens okay so the number of tokens is simply defining how many words or how many characters i can use inside the prompt and the response so here max response means what is the maximum number of tokens we can use in the response for example so here i am just uh, resetting the default uh, system message as you can see sorry uh, default i'm setting the default so i'm setting the default one and then clear the chat okay so here i'm saying suggest a caption for new uh, ice cream shop so i'm writing suggest a caption for the new ice cream shop and here the uh, max response i'm just giving uh 20 so means 20 tokens so 20 token means how many characters it can include that let's see i'm just going to write so you can see it is giving scoops of happiness indulge in sweet symphony that is a caption but i'm going to change this into five tokens and then trying to generate a response for this so i'm just giving the same and let's say can you see it is not able to complete that because i have given only five tokens which means using the five tokens it is unable to write the complete text because the response maximum size or maximum length is decided by this response so if i change this to 10 then you may get some more lengthy one can you see it comes up to this so if i make it 100 then it may use more okay can you see so that means the max response is deciding the number of uh, characters or number of words that can be included inside the output and it is very very important to understand why because the amount of token that is used is calculated for pricing that means how many tokens you are consuming based on that the cost is calculated so if you consume more tokens then you will be charged more if you are consuming less tokens then you will be charged less so if you are unnecessarily allowing the model to use as many tokens then you have to pay more so if suppose if you want to create a simple caption then you can limit the number of ma max allowed a token is 20 tokens and 25 tokens maximum so if you give a 100 or 200 then the you are allowing the model to consume more tokens so what is the need so you need a simple caption right so to reduce the cost you have to uh, tell the model consume only these many tokens only so the model will try to create a statement or try to create a caption that fit within that limit okay it's not possible every time but yes it will try to fit within that limit so here a uh, number of tokens which we can consume or which we can use is very very important another thing is temperature parameter the temperature parameter is used to control the randomness which means if you are setting the temperature to a lower value which is zero which means it will produce the repetitive values means every time almost the same result will come for example if i am telling the model to create a caption the 
number of captions that are randomly generated will be less. Maybe the same caption appear five times. But if you set the value to one or near one, then it will be generating all time various caption means different different captions it will generate. It will be more creative. You are telling the model. OK, think creatively and generate new new captions. But if you set it to zero, then you are telling the model. OK, just create only limited number of uh, captions, just one or two caption and just use only that every time. So how many times the user is asking to create the token? Sorry, create the caption. It returns the same caption every time. So we can balance this by putting in an average value like a 0 0.5 is the average value so that it is not very creative but not repetitive also. It's an average. Okay. So you can do in that way. Okay. So that is also controlling the uh, parameters, oh, sorry, the response content, right? Code generation we can explore. We have already done it. I have showed you how we can tell the model to generate a code because I have set the behavior of the model by configuring the system message that you are a Python assist code assistant. So whenever I ask something to the model, it always try to generate a Python code. So that way we can configure the behavior of the model. So uh, model will uh, act as a person who understand and generate the code. Okay, so that is there in the first lab. So in the first lab, almost we have done everything because we have uh, created the resource, deployed the model, and then worked with the chat completion, configured the parameters, configured the system message, and generated the code. So that's it from the first module. Now we have to go to the second module, but before going into the second module, we'll take a small 10 minutes break. And after the break, we will continue with the second module. OK, so now if you have any questions, you can post the questions in the chat. So I'll be answering to that as well.
uh, hello guys i shared the complimentary learning achievement batch so guys go and redeem your batch Guys, uh, first you have to create Microsoft Learn account, then you can go with that URL which already mentioned on chat box. So guys, go and redeem your badge. If anyone facing problems, so let me know on chat box. I will be there to help you out. Guys, if you are done with the batch, please put done on chat box so I can see who are done with the batch.
uh, if anyone is still remaining, please redeem your badge. Hello, all are back. We'll continue the session. Yes, sir. OK. OK, so let's continue to the next module. Now we are starting with the module two, which is on natural language solutions with Azure Open Service. Azure Open AI, natural language solutions. In this, we are going to see how we can integrate the Azure Open AI into our applications and how to use the REST APIs. Also, how to use the programming SDK for uh, connecting the OpenAI solutions with applications. In Azure OpenAI, we have different models available, including the GPT-4, GPT-3.5, embeddings, DAL-E, uh, and uh, even Whisper also available in some locations. So we have a text model that is large language model for natural language processing, which is GPT. So there are two families of GPT models available, that is GPT 3.5 family and GPT 4 family. So you will be able to use these models inside your applications by making a request to the API endpoints. Because all these models are available as API endpoints or API services, so you can make a request to this. There are primarily three REST API models or REST API endpoints available from GPT, which is the natural language processing model. One is completions, another one is embeddings, and the third one is chat completion. As I have mentioned earlier in the previous module, Completion mod model is only available in older models like a GPT-3 or GPT-3.5 Turbo Instruct, which is compatible with the 3, okay? So the completion model is taking an input and generates one or more predicted 
completion text we have seen that how it is writing a story or how it is writing a letter okay that means we can give a prompt and it writes the response for that embeddings model is also used with the old models means it is also used uh, with that natural language processing only but it is not directly used for any text processing it is typically used for generating the embeddings vector means the uh, float numbers representation of text is returned using the embeddings vector okay so that embeddings vectors can be returned using the embeddings endpoint and embeddings endpoint also available with old models only uh, so it is something similar to completion so completion and embeddings are available with the old gpt models like a text embeddings ada uh, or gpt3 or 3.5 uh, instruct these are the models that support completion and embeddings but if you are building applications with the new gpt models like a gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 then you have to use the chat completion endpoint see what is the difference while making a request to it if you are deploying an azure open ai uh, gpt model you can make a request to the completion endpoint understand completion endpoint available only with the older models and for deploy or while deploying this older models sorry just a minute screen is not okay so <clears throat> the completion endpoint the completion endpoint will be something like this https then endpoint endpoint means the base url of your azure open ai uh, uh, that is uh, endpoint.openai.azure.com slash open ai slash deployments slash here is the name of the deployment so this deployment means the name of the deployment that we have done slash completions for example if your deployment name is xyz then that name of the deployment will come in this part slash completions means you are making a request to the completions endpoint and you can specify a prompt so prompt equal to your favorite uh, shakespeare play is so that is a simple example we have so you we are giving a text that is halfway completed so we can say this is not a complete text it's a half completed text and we can we are specifying max tokens that can be used is five so that means i want the response in just five tokens okay so when i make a request it just returns the result as choices choices of text is coming as what macbeth macbeth is the result generated so the completion you can say your favorite shakespeare play is Macbeth, right so that is the completion which means we are just providing a prompt and it returns a completion response now when it comes to embeddings embeddings is called using the same endpoint but you can see the deployment name can be different so you have to use a embeddings model here okay slash embeddings so the uri will be embeddings and you can provide a text input so input equal to the food was delicious and waiter was very friendly so that is a sample text we can provide as an input in the request body 
and it is going to return the data. So inside of the data, the first array item is going to be an object that contains an embeddings array. So the embeddings is an is returns as an array of numerical values. Can you see these are the numerical values within the vector? So that is uh, the embeddings and you can see which model is used for embeddings, text embeddings ADA version two. For chat completion, it's something similar. You can specify the endpoint base URL slash. Here is the deployment of your GPT model. It may be GPT 3.5 or later versions like a GPT-4 or something, slash chat slash completion. So you will be specifying the uh, completions endpoint and you can specify the request body like a chat conversation message. You can see this is a chat conversation message history and inside this messages array, we specify objects. So each object contains a role and a content. So the first role is always a system message setting. So if you remember in chat in chat conversation, the, we will be setting the behavior of assistant using the uh, system message. So we can say role equal to system and content equal to you are an assistant that teaches people about AI. So which means we are giving uh, an instruction that you are an assistant for helping the people to learn about AI. And this is a second message which is sent by the user. So role user and the content is does Azure OpenAI support multiple languages? So that's a question and the assistant is giving an answer so role equal to assistant and content equal to yes open ai supports several languages so why this is given because this is a completed conversation right so user is asking some question and the assistant is giving the answer so why this is given because this is going to be an example this is going to be an example of the conversation so Whenever a user asks a question, how the model or how the uh, uh, GPT is going to respond, that example is given here. Okay. So just a minute. Just give me a minute. Okay, sorry, let's continue. Yeah, so we were discussing about the example which is given here in the prompt because this example is to make the uh, model aware or understand about how to answer. So here you can see the assistant is 
answering like this. So which means if somebody asks a question, the assistant is supposed to answer uh, yes and then an uh, explanation about that. So this is the format of the answer we are expecting. So next time when we ask a question that this is the actual prompt question. OK, so when the user ask a question that do other cognitive services support translation, then we are expecting the answer in the same format, right? So it is going to give an answer here in the response. You can see choices of messages and role equal to assistant and is going to give the answer as yes. Other cognitive services also support translation, right? So this is going to be the chat completions uh, prompt and completions format. Now the question, if I want to call this from application uh, programming languages, how we will do the call? So one way is to make a call using the direct REST APIs. As you see here, from using the REST API endpoints, we can make a call. Because if you are making a call from JavaScript or Java, Python, PHP, Ruby, Scala, any language, because every language now supports HTTP API calls. So you can make calls to this API, this endpoints using REST API. That is one way. But for some languages like uh, C Sharp, Python, Java kind of languages, uh, OpenAI is providing the uh, libraries, which means instead of making REST API calls, they are providing some classes and functions through the libraries. So what you need to do, install the open AI library available for Java, sorry, uh, C Sharp and uh, Python languages. That means uh, for uh, C Sharp, it's a NuGet package and Python, it's a pip package. And then you just need to call it using the open AI client class. So you can see here, we are importing the open Azure open AI namespace then create an instance of the open ai client by passing the endpoint name and the credential that is the uh, key so where the key and endpoint is available whenever you create whenever you create an azure open ai service in that azure open ai service left side you will see un the, under the keys and endpoints you can see the key one and key two so this is the key you can use and below is the endpoint so this is the endpoint this is the location and these are the keys key one and key two okay so this key and endpoint you can use in your sdk to authenticate you can see while making the request uh, you can create an instance of the open ai client and uh, pass the endpoint and key. And here you can make a request structure like a chat completions, uh, chat completion options equal to new chat completion options. And then you can specify what is the message structure. So new chat message role equal to system. That is chat role dot system means it's a it's going to be a system message, comma, and then your content message content. Second is the uh, next message that is chat role dot user and what is Azure OpenAI. If you want, you can include some examples like a, a user and assistant uh, communication as an example, and then you can ask the final question. But here there is no example mentioned. You can also configure the max tokens. So how many tokens we can use maximum in the response so that we can suggest what is the temperature that is the randomness of the response is controlled by temperature that you can specify and also what is a deployment name which uh, model is deployed and that models deployment name is also need to be specified 
then we makes a call to it by calling client dot get chat completions and passing the chat completion options which returns the response from the response we read the first message or first uh, result and the result contains a message the message object contains a content right so that is your completion if you see sorry the here this is the choices choices of zero dot message dot content right so that is a response same can be done using python so if you are a python user you will be able to invoke this using python as well for that you have to import the uh, azure open ai class from the open ai uh, package and then create an instance of azure open ai by passing the endpoint key and version then make a call to the response like a client dot chat dot completions dot create means you are making a call to the chat completions endpoint then you can specify the deployment model name that is what is a model name that is a deployment name temperature max tokens and also the message like here more into json structure so role equal to system content equal to the content message and uh, role equal to user and content equal to uh, text and then when you make a call to this function it returns the response the response choices will contains the message so you can print the message content So that's the end of second module because the second module is just talking about how to consume the open AI models from applications using REST API or uh, using SDK. Now, if you want to complete the lab for it, you can go to the second lab, which is natural language using Azure Open AI. And if you go to that, you will be able to see integrate Azure Open AI into the application. So the first step always remains same. That is creating the Azure Open AI service and deploying a model. Okay, So that remains same. So we are not going to modify that or we are not going to repeat that step because we have already created and deployed the open ai model you can see this is the open ai model which is already created and deployed and you can also see the model is also deployed gpt 3.5 turbo 16k is deployed so the first two steps that is creating the open ai resource and deploying a model we don't need to execute again because it's already done now we can start with this third step which is prepare to develop an application in visual studio code so what we have to do is we have to go to the uh, github repository and download or clone this package that is or clone this repository that is https github.com slash microsoft learning slash ms learn dot open ai which is this folder only this pack uh, github repository only which we have already downloaded and we need to open this particular uh, folder in v vs code so we have to extract and then open this in vs code so that we have already opened so currently this repository is all opened now to configure this configure the sample application you need to go to the lab files folder sorry the lab files folder and inside that we have 02 NLP 
Azure OpenAI folder. So we can go to lab files. Here 0 to NLP OpenAI. And here you can see there are two folders, uh, C Sharp and Python, that contains uh, sample application code, means half completed application code. So Python folder contains the Python code and C Sharp folder contains the C Sharp code. So for simplicity, we will be continuing with Python only because that is very easy to implement. So we can go to the appropriate folder means if you are a C Sharp user, then you can go to C Sharp. But if you are a Python user, you can go to Python. So I'm using Python for this example. And we need to install the package for OpenAI. If you are using .NET, you can install the .NET NuGet package for OpenAI. Or if you are using Python, the Python's OpenAI package you can install. So this is the package name. You can just uh, install it. So here I'll open the command terminal. I think it's already installed in my machine. Yes, as you can see. Okay, I think it's uh, installed the specific version. And after that, after installing that, we have to go into the Python folder or C Sharp folder, depends on which one you are using. We have to go and update the .env file or appsettings.json file for C Sharp. So in Python case, we have a .env file. Inside the env file, we have to update the endpoint. We have to update the endpoint and the key. Okay. And we need to specify the model name. So let's go inside the Python folder. There is a dot env. And you can see there are three environment variables to be configured. Open AI endpoint, open AI key, and open AI model. So I have already told you from where you can get the key endpoint and the model names. So endpoint and the key we can get from the Azure portal. So I'll go to Azure portal and left side we can go to keys and endpoints. And from here I can copy this endpoint and put it here. Done. From where you can get the key, this is the key. Copy it, put it here. And the open AI model, the model name is anyway coming from the portal. So here we can we can go to this and I think there is some deployments. Okay, I'll deploy a new deployment because the this is in Sweden Central, which is for which I have copied the EN endpoint because I have two instances. So for this, this is the name of the deployment which I can use. Okay. So after putting this environment variable values, next step is to write the code. It means we have to update this code. For that, we can open the Python file. Here, we need to import the OpenAI package. For that, let's go here and uh, write this line. This is to import the OpenAI package. See, from the OpenAI package, I am importing the Azure OpenAI. And we have a main function. Inside the main function, we are loading the environment variables 
from the dot env file so inside the dot env file we have this environment variables we are loading these environment variables into memory and then reading the environment variables into the python variables so these are the python variables then we opens some text files from uh, the text files folder so there is a text files folder there is a sample text file given the process of making maple syrup begins by uh, tapping spout and something so it's a very lengthy text as you can see it's a lengthy text okay so what we want to do is read this text into a text variable see we are opening the file which is located in the text files folder we open this and read the contents into this text files variable and then we are going to uh, create a summary of that lengthy content so this is a lengthy content but uh, what i want to do is i want to just to summarize this in maybe a couple of lines okay so what we can do we have to write the code for summarizing this so add the code to build the request so for that we can go to here we need to initialize the open ai client okay we are doing the python so we can go with the python example so we can initialize the azure open ai client by using this okay and then we have to make a request so here you can see we are creating an instance of Azure Open AI. This is the client by passing the endpoint key and API version. Then we can make a response and print the response content. So if you see a response equal to client dot chat dot completions dot create and we are passing the model name temperature max tokens and the message so message means role equal to system content equal to you are a helpful assistant and second message is a role equal to user and content equal to summarize the following text in 20 words or less so in 20 words we have to summarize it but which text so you remember that we have read the complete text into a variable called t text so that we are appending here okay So when I make a request, we'll get the response here. From the response, we are printing the message content. What is a response message content we are printing? So this is the completed code using the library. We are making a call to chat completions endpoint, passing the text and asking it to summarize. So we'll get the response and we are printing that response. Let's run this. So in the command window, I can say Python, then test, what is the name, sorry, CD uh, lab files. 0 to Python. Okay. And then we can run the code. Python test. What was this going to C sharp?
Okay, you can see here I'm making a call to the test open AI model dot py. Okay, and let me run it. So sending the request and here the summary we are getting see summary equal to the summary response content we are printing. So this is about the maple syrup making right so maple syrup is made by tapping spout into a sugar maple tree collecting uh, sap and boil boiling it down to concentrated sugars right so that's a uh, in 20 words it is summarizing right so that is one but the actual text is very lengthy so we are summarizing the lengthy text into just 20 words okay so that is the benefit or that is the use of uh, open ai's gpt's summarization feature so for that how we have called let me repeat we installed the open ai's package and imported the azure open ai class in the environment variable files we have to specify the key and endpoint and the model name and then <coughs> We are loading this environment variables into memory and then read the file content, making a client object for Azure OpenAI, passing the endpoint and the key. And then we are making a completions request for uh, summarizing it. So we are passing the model name, temperature, tokens, and messages. And once the response is generated here, we are printing this response. Okay. So that's it from the module two. So I can see a question from Karthik, can we send multiple questionnaire in the form of array? Sorry, I'm, I'm not clear with what is that question. So what do you mean by questionnaire? If you can clarify that in the chat, it's better. And if anybody have a question to ask, please put that questions in the chat. inside the prompt message yes you can give examples that is it's not questionnaire it's kind of uh, examples you can give like uh, this is direct way of asking that you want to summarize it in 20 words but how to summarize if you want to give an example here you can give another example like a role equal to sorry role is user and then user is giving a con content so here you can provide a lengthy text and then how to summarize it example you can give assistant here is the sample response okay so this way you can give an example so it not to be a question and answer every time it can be anything which okay the if i'm summarizing this lengthy text how this response comes here so that sample we can provide so same way it will summarize this also so this above mentioned things are called the example. But for summarizing, we don't need to give any example, okay, unnecessary. But any questions or text content generations, uh, you need to means 
uh, some some kind of formatting and all required you can specify the examples so examples are not required in every scenario Kirti, I'm not sure whether you are able to use mic. Okay. Yes, I have given. Just I have given the access. Can you just ask? Hello, Swami, sir. Yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Actually, I have a confusion here. When um, we we are doing this Python program just now, you show me the sample, right? Uh, you show us the, we have to write the code and then we do the uh, uh, means, uh, response from the uh, chat GPT one, right? Just now you show the lab. Yes, yes. So that lab uh, means uh, that program we just do as an executable file and we run, is it? No, this is a Python script. So the yes, script yes. is not executable. You have to just uh, uh, fill up the missing code and uh, just uh, come write the, the write this uh, sorry run this code. So uh, the lab code lab instruction contains the missing code. As you see here, this is the lab instruction file this instruction file contains the code and it is clearly written where to fill up this code so open this file inside this file you have to put this code and then run it see here is a example how to test also they have yes. given the code so you just need to follow the instruction you don't need to write anything separately read the instruction document copy that code and put it or follow the instructions what they are asking to do just follow that instruction to complete the lab. Yes, okay, so. I, I got it. Uh, as a student pro learning perspective, this is a fine like practical tutorials, lab and all. But in the real life, practically, when we go to the work field, right? That time, how we use this thing? That is the one is my basic question. Because in the company we go, they say, OK, you know AI? OK, come and work with us. But we can means myself also confused once i learned this one how i implement over there because normally if as a normal user if i go now also i open the chat gpt and ask them and uh, i put the uh, like quest, uh, summarization or give me the short answer as a prompt and chat gpt interface already giving the answers so what is the purpose to understand this one and write the things over uh, in our practical life See, chat GPT is just an implementation of uh, GPT models, like a, it's a, like a uh, pre-created website where you can converse, right? So, but it, when you build an application, for example, you are creating an application for a healthcare industry or maybe a, for a hospital. So in that hospital, they have a website. So what you want to do is, you want to create a chat assistant. I'm just giving an example. You want to create a chat assistant. So customers can ask some questions about the hospital. So how to uh, take an OP ticket or how to uh, pay the bills for this hospital or uh, how to uh, book an appointment in this hospital. So this kind of questions when we ask, the chat assistant needs to give an answer intelligently. So in a normal case, the generative AI will give a generic answer, like uh, not to specific any hospital, like uh, uh, it may be a big hospital, small hospital, to give you general answer, you go to the counter and take an OP ticket, or you go and uh, specify the name of the doctor and take an appointment, just a general answer. But in the final module, in the sixth module, we, we will see how we can provide our own data means i want to give my hospital's data as an input and then based on that the model will give the answers like for this hospital you have to go to 
uh, uh, this particular room and visit this person and uh, take an appointment, something like that. So it means how to do for that particular hospital. So when you build the AI application or AI enabled website uh, for your application, how to write a code. So inside the chat uh, window, whenever the user is giving a text, how this text will go to the backend uh, GPT model. So that we are practicing here, like how we can connect. Suppose you can say uh, the, the text what we are providing here. Let me show you. Yeah. So the text we are providing here is the text which is received from the user. So that text we are passing to the chat GPT model using uh, a request or as a request. So you have to use this logic and build the web application. Means how to communicate to the backend GPT model. This is the logic. So you, or maybe you are creating a mobile application. From the mobile application, how you make use of uh, API call, means a GPT call. For example, you are creating a, a mobile application for uh, stock marketing. So you will be uh, uh, providing an option for customers to enter their question, like uh, which share I have to invest or what will be the trend uh, tomorrow. Some kind of question you can uh, ask means you will be giving a text box for entering the prompt. So when you click on uh, give me the answer or get the answer button, it, this text will go to the model and get the answers. So how the application, maybe mobile application, web application, how it will connect to the GPT model, that is the code. So it's not uh, writing any complete application, it's just giving you an idea how we can con uh, uh, connect with the backend API. Okay, now as a developer, it's your responsibility to use this logic in different type of application. Tomorrow, if you are building a mobile application using Python, you use this three, four lines of code to connect with the Azure OpenAI. And get, after getting the response, printing that response in the mobile screen is your logic. Here, what they have done, they are just printing the result inside the uh, screen using console.write or maybe print the statement, right? So instead of that, you may be using a mobile screen or mobile so text box or label or something to print it. So this labs just enable you how to connect with the backend APIs. That's it. Is that gives you the answer for your question? I think uh, you are now muted. So you can use the chat to give the answers if, if you want to talk. Okay. So next question, if we feed the data of last 10 years competitive exam, paper questions and uh, their answers, can it be possible the system can predict the question paper and Okay, it's a good question. So if you give the questions of uh, old, means old question papers, if you give, it cannot predict what will be the next question. That is always based on who is going to create the question. But yes, it can find out the answers for the questions from the previous data. Like you have, you are training the model with uh, previous years of question and anytime you can go and ask the model that uh, okay can you give me the answer for this particular uh, question so it will go and find out and search and give you the answer from the previous question it cannot predict what is what will be the next question or what will be the question for next exam because that is always based on a person who created the question right
So there is a question from Nivedita. Can we pass the data from external sources? Yes, uh, yes, you can. Uh, that is uh, programmatically you have to read the Excel files and put into uh, the example section. If you are talking about the example, yes, you have to read it. You may be using Panda or some other library. You can open the Excel file and read the cell content, the, the uh, example questions and answers you can put into that. Or if you want to use the Excel as a base model or base data, grounding data, you can use that also. OK, so let's move to the next module which is module three. In this module, we are going to see what is prompt engineering. So prompt engineering, if you see, it's not any engineering course or any language or framework or nothing like that. So prompt engineering is simply a technique or it's an art of creating the better prompts for getting the relevant answers. OK, so we are going to talk about that here. So here we will talk uh, about what is prompt engineering is review considerations for different endpoints and explore different techniques of prompt engineering. So what is prompt engineering so it's not any engineering course or anything like that so what it means is it just an art of creating the prompts a better prompt so i can give you an example uh, uh, that is demonstrating how the prompt making is very very important okay so it's a general example i used to show not related to Azure OpenAI, but yes. So I can go to the uh, chat GPT. And here in chat GPT, I am asking a question. I'm giving a prompt. So whatever I'm giving is a prompt. So this is actually a pre-created virtual assistant, right? So that means whenever we ask something, the assistant is giving the answer. So you can also create such applications using Azure OpenAI's chat GPT model, sorry, GPT models. So here I am asking create uh, 10 MCQ questions on Angular. That's it. It's a very simple prompt, right? So if I give this prompt, you can see it is giving the MCQ questions, but the, dis but the problem, the difficulty I found here is there is no answers for it, right? Which means I have told the model to create the MCQ, but it is not giving the answers for that. So this prompt is not giving the expected result. So what I am going to do, I will rephrase this saying create 10 MCQ questions on Angular with answers. Now you can see it is giving the question as well as the answer. But I'm still not satisfied because if I go to any specific question, maybe what is two-way binding in Angular, it is giving the answer here, right? Answer C. But if I want some uh, ex more explanation about this uh, separately, I can ask here, give me the answers with the explanations in detail. Okay. So that means it will give you the uh, answers along with the explanations. So here it is just giving a one line explanation about that. Okay. 
and second thing here you can see uh, it's created the questions from the angular framework just maybe some basic questions only it has asked but angular has very uh, uh, deep topics like angular schematics inter, uh, uh, http interceptors guards uh, resolvers and many things so there are no questions included from those advanced topics suppose if i am going to generate a question or question set for advanced training i cannot use this question because these questions are basic level questions which is not covering the advanced topics so i can rephrase this and say that include questions from maybe dependency injection http interceptors schematics ssr then uh, resolvers and uh, uh, maybe guards okay so it's going to include the questions from these topics okay, only. Submit. Now you can see, instead of asking the basic question, like what is Angular or what which language is used, kind of basic questions is not using, it asking the questions from that specific topics. Can you see? It's asking what is SSR or resolvers, uh, guards, so you can see that that questions all come from the topics which I have given. It's not basic questions, right? So that is more relevant. But the problem is I want to generate 10 questions, but I see that all the 10 questions are either easy questions or medium level questions or hard level questions. But what I want to do is I want to generate create uh, maybe four easy questions uh, three uh, me medium level questions and uh, three hard level questions so now it go and create easy questions first so from the same topics only but is uh, four easy questions three medium level questions and uh, three hard level questions. So if I'm a trainer I, and I want to generate the question set for my participants, instead of just saying, create, please go and create uh, 10 questions. Instead of that, if I go and specify the prompt correctly, I will get the expected result, right? This is what I am expecting, right? So understand the benefit of giving a clear prompt. So what you need, you give a clear, specific, uh, what to say, uh, prompt. So there I have clearly mentioned the grounding content also. Here the, this is the grounding content saying, create the questions on these, 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 these topics, which means it to use this information to create the questions. It not randomly pick some topic and generating the answer. It is using this as the uh, what content, the supporting content. It's not grounding content, the supporting content for creating these questions, right? So this is called a prompt engineering. So in five minutes, if I want to explain the prompt engineering, I'll do this because this clearly says what is the importance of writing the prompt in a correct uh, format, clear, specific, with examples or without examples, right? So if you do, we'll get it like that. Okay, so here we are going to discuss some other aspects of prompt engineering. Like, so what is prompt engineering? It is uh, uh, constructing the prompts to maximize the relevancy and accuracy of completions specify formatting and style completions, provide conversational context and mitigate bias and improve fairness. So if you want to build a correct prompt, which is more relevant 
uh, for the context, you can use prompt engineering. <clears throat> so in case of uh, completions endpoint, we can give the prompt like this that you are sorry, you are a professional events planner. So you are giving a hint that you are a events planner and then we are telling okay write an invitation uh, for a party to celebrate in the uh, launch of a new product which means we have already given the update that you are a professional events planner so you write the letter or write the email in such a format so that is uh, one uh, what what say a way of writing better prompt because we have already told who are you means who are you means what is the role of the assistant there? Now the assistant is acting like a planner and then he writes the answer for that. But in case of chat completions, we have to set the system message. So if you are using the old API, you can use this format. But in case of uh, what to say, uh, new APIs or new uh, versions of models, you need to specify the system message for that inside the system message you specify that uh, you are a professional events planner and then the user is asking the prompt to write the invitation for a party to celebrate the launch of new event so both are doing the same thing but for completions api you will be specifying the system message inside the prompt itself but here we are writing it as a system message if you are using chat completions API. So you don't need to look into the completions API because going forward only chat completions will be there because all new versions support only which model chat completions model where we set the behavior of the assistant using the system message. So setting up the system message is very, very important because it will affect the behavior of the model or behavior of the assistant because you if you remember i set the behavior of the assistant as uh, python developer or python coder so whenever i ask a question it will automatically write python code for doing that i don't need to explicitly say you please write a python code i just need to give the question okay how to uh, find the maximum or how to uh, check whether it is palindrome and I'm, I'm not asking to write the code but it will give the answer so writing the or specifying the behavior of the assistant is very very important and it will affect the completion result second is providing a clear instruction so i have already show you an ex showed an example what is the importance of writing clear instruction so what you are expecting you write this in a neat and clear format so that you will get the expected result. See here another example. We want to write a product description. Okay, the product is a water bottle. So we want a product description for new water bottle. So if you provide only this much information, so the model cannot understand what type of bottle it is, what are the features of bottle it uh, bottle has. So it cannot understand anything about that. So it is simply write some general or generic information. Can you see it? Write a description about the generic bottle description or bottle information. But in the right side, you can see we have clearly mentioned what are the different features the bottle has. Okay. So based on that, it creates the description. See write a product description for a new water bottle that has that is 100 percent recycled be sure to include it comes in natural colors no dyes and each purchase removes 10 pounds of plastic from the ocean uh, from our oceans so that means we have given some extra informations or uh, it may be the features of the uh, bottle or it may be the benefit of using the bottle something we have given so now if you see it is creating a description which includes this informations like this is 100% recycled and it is not using any colors no dyes 
and it is uh, helping us to remove the uh, plastic bottles from oceans and so on right so it's giving uh, some information that because it's a eco-friendly water bottle so that means it is creating more relevant uh, product description so this is more catchy than the generic answer so look at the difference in the prompt one is very simple uh, prompt another one is very informative prompt so whenever you give a prompt it has to be very clear and specific second what are the different things we can include inside the prompt if you see uh, inside the prompt content we are including multiple uh, things then we have to separate them using the section marker section marker is typically a three lines or three hash so typically if you provide as a single text you can uh, separate that uh, sections using the three hyphens then there can be a primary content so what you have to process maybe suppose you are asking the model to summarize it so what do you want to summarize that is the main content okay so primary content is the content which you want to translate or which you want to summarize so that content is called the primary content for example you are giving a paragraph and asking it to summarize so that paragraph is called the primary content so a prompt may contain a primary content okay but it is not mandatory that every prompt will contain primary content okay it may be just a question like uh, who is the prime minister of uh, usa or sorry the india or some some question so there is no primary content it's just a prompt okay so some queries may not have primary content but if there is a primary content it uh, generates the answers based on the primary content supporting content that means we have a primary content but for generating the answers we can provide some additional examples so if you remember while uh, asking the model to create the questions i have given some supporting content like okay you can go and generate the questions but the question can come from this 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 topics so i have told okay these are the topics i am interested so create the questions based on this so the actual thing is or actual uh, prompt is create the 10 questions okay on angular so from angular any area question it will generate but i have given a supporting instruct information saying that don't go and generate question from any topic use this areas or these topics only so it will help the model to organize itself and create questions which is more re relevant right so that is the supporting content so here you can say topics i am very interested in ai webinar dates submission de deadlines etc okay and extract the key points from the above mail and put them in bulleted list so it's going to uh, uh, tell what to do so this is one example and this is another one so extract the key points from the mail so we have a mail content which may be the primary content from the primary content what we have to do okay so that we are saying here so it is going to extract the key points but we are telling okay put them in a bulleted list format grounding content so grounding content is used to provide a set of data or it is used to provide some in information based on that data i have to generate the answers okay that means i am giving a complete blogs or complete uh, paragraph about artificial intelligence then i am telling the model create the questions based on this paragraph or i can say um, suppose very simple i am asking the model to generate some questions okay so it will generate questions on different topics but what i can do is i will give my 
story, my own story. Suppose if I have written a story on uh, uh, elephant and tiger, I have I will give the elephant and tiger story first, and then I will tell. Okay, create questions based on the story, which means my story will be used as the ground content because I'm going to create questions based on that story. Otherwise, if I'm not giving the story and I'm telling, okay, create some questions, which means it will make create questions on various subjects. But I don't want that. I want to create questions based on some specific content. So that is the grounding content. Okay. Cues. Cues provide a starting point on which the completion builds. If you remember, we have given, uh, means I have given an example uh, for the story. Once upon a time, there was a king. So it's just a starting statement I have given, but it was not completed, right? So when I give the starting statement and click on the generate button, it will write the remaining part of the story. So that is a kind of cue. Okay, which because I have given the starting point so that the remaining things will be created automatically. Okay, so here another example, summarize the reviews above. So for example, there, assume that there are some reviews given here. Review, this is the first review. This is the review, this is the second review. Like this, we have reviews. And below I'm giving, summarize the re reviews above. So if I'm just giving this, summarize the reviews above, it will give you a, a description saying that, okay, the above review says that the product is good or bad or something like that, just a information. But I have give a, given a hint. What is the hint I have given? Most common complaints are, and then giving the bulleted point. So it will start writing the complaints in uh, bulleted point format. Like uh, most point, most common complaints are, and then say the movie was too long. The spe uh, special effects were terrible. So you can see the reviews saying about that only. The writing, the writing was good, but the movie was too long. The special effects were terrible. So these are the reviews. So here I told to summarize this means instead of writing very lengthy reviews, write it in a short format, but most common complaints are, and then I'm giving a bulleted point so that it will understand, okay, I have to give the answer in the bulleted point. So it is giving a starting point so that the model will understand how to write it. Or it, uh, while writing the SQL queries, I can say, select star from and the remaining part it will write okay so write an sql query to extract the informations for from a particular table then i will say select star from then remaining part it will automatically write okay <laughs> or in case of python function so while writing the Python function, I just need to specify the function name and remaining part it will automatically write. For example, here below, let me check. I'm saying DEF is palindrome and STR. See, it is understanding from this beginning word what needs to be the next one. So, is palindrome is the function name I have just given, and my AI assistant automatically understand. Okay, he is trying to find out a palindrome function. So, DEF means function. So, it will automatically write the remaining. Okay, so I can say DEF is even number and I say number see automatically it writes the remaining so from this it will understand what I am expecting so is even number and I am passing a number so by looking by looking into this it will understand what this function has to do right so that is what 
Q. Okay. Requesting output composition, that means we can write a table in markdown format with the six animals in it and their uh, uh, genus and uh, species. So you can see if I say write a table in markdown with the six animals in it with their genus and species, so it is going to create this. But if I'm not giving any example or anything like that, it may go, go and create six, uh, sorry, three tables. One table will show the animal names, one table will show the genus, and one table sh will show the species name. But instead of that, we can give a simple example that, okay, the format should come in a three column format. The first column will show animal name, second column will show genus, and the third will show the species. And the one example I can give, so the remaining elephants, it will automatically write. Okay. So that is output composition. So how the output has to come? we can specify an example so that the remaining things it will generate as it is. And what is the importance of system message? I think I don't need to explain it again and again because we have already done it because if you give the system message, the uh, model will understand what is the role of that assistant, okay, or how the assistant has to behave. So here is very interesting thing like a role system content equal to you are a casual helpful assistant. You will talk like an American old Western film character. Mm -hmm. So if you know in American a film character means older movies, the characters will talk in specific style, right? So you can say the prompt is given as the user is asking can you direct me to the library? So if you are not setting any specific behavior, what will be the answer for this? So can you direct me to the library? This is a question. So the model can say, okay, you can take a, take a left turn from the left side. Uh, from the left, uh, you will see a large building on the right side. So get inside the building and you will see uh, uh, an, a door that written library and you go there, something like that. So very straightforward answer, right? But here you have set the behavior like you will talk like an American old Western film character. So now the answer will be something like a movie dialogue. Well, how do you tell? Stranger, you don't know the library like that, right? So you can see that output is just like a movie uh, script. Right, so it's actually giving the answer like library, where is the library? But you can see the, it's like a movie dialogue. Well, how did there? Stranger, the library, hmm? uh, why j just head down to the main road till you hit the town town square. Once you're there, you uh, take a left and follow the st uh, street for spell, right? So that means this text, you can just imagine that how a movie character, the old movie character is uh, uh, answering this question, right? So you can see if I'm not specifying this behavior, it's going to be just a normal English, which is give a, gives a simple and straightforward answer for where is a library, right? So that is the benefit of system message which is used to set the behavior of the assistant. Conversational history and few short learning. A few short learning simply means giving examples, right? So I, I have already showed you uh, in the prompt how to give examples. So after setting the system message, you can also specify some, some e examples as you see here. As you see here, here we are giving one example here. So this is example number one. Because when the user is asking, 
that was an awesome experience and the assistant is giving answer as positive because here we have set to the behavior you are an assistant that evaluate the sentiment of the customer feedback so it is checking the feedback and saying whether it is positive or negative but if i am not giving any example it will be giving a very descriptive answer like uh, okay i feel uh, this review is uh, a positive review and because the because i can see that uh, some uh, good words about this uh, movie or good words about this uh, hotel something like that right so uh, uh, instead of giving very lengthy explanation i want the answer in a just a single word whether it is good or bad or positive or negative like that so whenever i user is asking a prompt like that was an awesome experience that is a review so the answer what i am expecting is just one word that is positive second example is this one user is asking that i won't do it again or i won't do that again so the answer this is the second example which is giving the answer in one word that is negative this is the third example which says that was not worth my time it is again giving a one word answer for that that is negative so from the three examples it will understand the answer has to come in a single word negative or positive that's it so when i ask my actual question so this is my actual prompt that is you can't miss this so from this it will understand okay i have to give a single word answer whether it is positive or negative so it will give the answer as positive because from the previous three examples it understood how to answer right so instead of giving a very descriptive answer just give the answer in one word so that it is learned from this above examples so the when the fourth question comes it and give the answer in a single word so here few short learning is used so few short learning means we have used some examples means more than one examples to Uh, make the model understand or make the uh, uh, assistant understand about how to answer so from this it will be able to understand how to answer for the next two question okay that is few short learning and how i have given this examples these examples are given like a conversation history so if you look at this this is looks like a previous conversation right so this looks like a previous conversation that's why it is called a conversation history so from the uh, pre conversation history it learns how to answer and for the subsequent questions it will give the answer that is few short learning and coming to the last that is chain of thought which means <clears throat> suppose if you are asking the model to give an answer on a complex system or complex problem for example just a normal reasoning question like uh, maybe the person a goes to the shop and buys 10 apples then he saw his friend and he gave two apples to him and then uh, he received another three apples from another friend then on the way he gave five apples to some needy people how many apples he has left in his hand so this is a complex question because in one go it we cannot answer this we have to think like okay initially there was 10 apples two apples he gave to his friend then he received another three apple so 10 minus 2 then plus 3 that is 8 plus 11 then five apples he gave to somebody else so 11 minus 5 uh, now it is 6 so final answer is 6 so if you ask the model to give answer for this it gives in one word saying okay final answer is 
six or final answer is uh, seven, whatever it is. Okay, but I don't want to get a single line answer. What I want is give a step by step answer. So we can tell the model, okay, this is my problem. Give me step by step answer for this. So it will give the answer like step one. You have you bought 10 apples from the shop. So you have 10 apples in hand. You gave two apples to friend. So 10 minus 2 equal to 8. Then you got three apples from the friend. So 8 plus 3 equal to 11. The next step, you gave five apples to some needy people. So 11 minus 5. So it is 6. Right. So the final answer is 6. So instead of giving simply 6, it will just write the steps one by one and give the solution. So any complex scenario, I have just given an example. So any complex scenarios like this, you can tell the model, give me step by step approach or step by step answer for this so that it will be easy for us to understand whether the system is calculating this correct way or not. Right. So if it is simply saying the answer is six or seven or ten, we cannot understand whether it is just to give a random answer or it is actually calculating it correctly and giving the answer. Right. So we can tell the model to give step by step explanation for that. OK, so how he started from the beginning and. Uh, step by step, how he came into the final solution, right? So for any complex pro problems, we can. Uh, tell the model to give that, for example, here. What sport is easiest to learn, but hardest to master? Give me step by step approach of your thoughts ending your answer. So instead of giving uh, an answer like a badminton or golf or maybe something else, it is giving what is a reason for I'm saying that this is uh, hard, but this is easy or this is uh, uh, difficult. So we can say it is giving step one, identify the criteria for easy to learn. So because the question is what is which sports is easy to learn, but hardest to master. So what is the criteria for easy to learn and hard to master? For a sport to be considered to learn, it should be uh, use simple rules and require more equipment. Okay, that means simple rules, but more uh, uh, and require minimal equipment. That is easy to learn. For sport to be hard to master, it will require years of practice to perfect and have a large variety of techniques and strategies. So rules may be simple and very less equipment will be required. Means maybe one stick is enough for doing that and very simple rules. Just uh, you have to uh, play. That's it. OK, that means. Simple rules and very less number of equipments, but you for practice without practicing, you cannot do that. Maybe you have to practice years and years to uh, become a master. So that is mean by. Hard to master. So second step is saying considering different sports to fit this criteria, for example, tennis, simple rule and easy to pick up. OK, that means tennis is an example for simple uh, game, but because it has very less number of rules and the only one equipment is required. That is a badminton racket, right? So what is that bat bat? OK, golf, basic swing mechanics and easy to learn, but perfecting. Uh, perfecting them takes a lifetime of practice. So golf, if you consider basic swing mechanism, means golf means it's a very, very simple rule. Just one stick is enough, right? Or one or two stick is enough and you have to just hit it and put into the hole. So that is just a simple rule, but without practice, you cannot become a master, right? So that, so like this, it will evaluate different, different sports. And coming to a conclusion, finally, evaluate each sport based on the criteria 
and finally it comes to a conclusion make a decision based on the evaluation based on the above criteria and evaluation i would say that tennis is the sports that is easiest to learn but hard to master while it may require expensive equipment it is still accessible to many people the basic rules and techniques are easy to learn but mastering all the different shots and strategies takes years of practice so why it is saying tennis is uh, easy to learn but hard to master because yes there is uh, one only one equipment is enough that is a bat okay but uh, rules are also very simple but without learning the techniques very properly you cannot become a master right so that is the reason the ai is saying uh, tennis is the easy to learn but hard to master sport okay so this is the uh, way of giving the answer so instead of giving simple and one word answer so why it is or how it is coming to that conclusion step by step you can get the solution that is called a chain of thought so there is a lab associated with that but uh, now we cannot do that lab it's already 120 so we'll take a break otherwise we have to finish that lab and then go for the break uh, okay. okay so i think uh, then we'll finish this lab and then we can take a break i think it's not a very big thing Okay, I think it's better to do the lab post lunch. So it's already 1.20. So we'll take a break for lunch. And the post lunch, we will continue with the lab for this module. And we'll also cover the remaining modules. Okay. So let's go for the lunch and we will be continuing by 2.15. Okay, so I think that is enough. So we'll continue by 2.15. Okay. So all of you can go for the lunch break and after the lunch we'll continue. 